I'm down the Ovens River, right in the middle of Wangaratta with my good mate Jason Pratt who's sitting over there just setting up. And uh, we're cod fishing, we're bait fishing and we're using cheese for bait. A lot of people think that you shouldn't use cheese because it's bad and the fish can't digest it. There's a lot of myths. Personally I think they're all crap because cheese is the most popular bait in this whole area. And every day quite a lot of cod are caught in the Ovens River here on cheese and where are all the dead fish. I can nearly guarantee that last night somebody along here somewhere would have been using cheese for bait and you never ever encounter any dead fish. Secondly, I have seen them with golf balls in their stomach and mussels in their stomach. What hope have they got of digesting a golf ball or a mussel if they can't digest cheese, for God's sake? They digest turtles and crayfish and yabbies and yabby shells, but they can't digest cheese. I don't believe it. And thirdly, Murray Cod, like most fish, have the ability to regurgitate anything they want. They can cough up a carp, they can cough up cheese, they can cough up whatever they like, whenever they like. If they're not happy with what they've put in their mouth, then they can just cough that up at any time and spit it back out. The whole don't use cheese, it's bad for the fish thing is merely just a myth as far as I'm concerned. It could have been concocted by lure makers wanting to sell more lures and less bait, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's more likely to be caused by old timers that have most likely been too tight ass, too tight to buy new hooks. The cod have swallowed the cheese complete with the hook and it's probably stuck the gills together or something like that and the fish has gone belly up, therefore it's the cheese's fault, not the hook's fault. So, today I'm using cheese. I'm down here with Praddy, we're both using cheese. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. As with all of my bait fishing trips, I've just got this is an old rod that was custom made by Kevin Law back in the early 1990s. My dad had it made for me. I don't use expensive gear when I'm cod fishing. My other rod, which is just sitting beside me here, is an old Jarvis Walker Black Queen. I'm only making one cast every hour, half hour. I don't need to make a lot of casts. I don't need a $500 rod. I have got one and I use it for lure casting. So here I've got 12 pound monofilament line. Down the bottom I've got a sinker and I always use the sinker that is best for the job. Where I'm going to be casting this, which is out that way over there, there's not too much current. So I don't need a really big sinker and it's not overly deep this particular spot, maybe only two meters at best. If there was a lot more current and I had to keep the bait still, I'd go a bigger sinker. But it's always rule of thumb, use the lighter sinker I can get away with. I've then tied a loop in the line, just there, and I've got my hook hanging off the loop. That is called a paternoster rig, and you can see a video that I made about the paternoster rig up in the top left hand side of the screen right now. I'll put a little card up there for you. I've got a black magic hook. These were sent to me by Fishing Monthly magazine just recently. I quite like these. They've got a non-slip coating now. I'm using mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella cheese is the best cheese for this because it doesn't come off the hook as easy as tasty cheese. All I'm going to do is just put two bits of mozzarella cheese on just like that. Make sure the point is exposed. There's my bait. Uh, the most unnatural presentation you could expect to find in the Ovens River. I can't remember the last time I saw a block of mozzarella cheese floating down but for some reason the cod love it you don't get annoyed by too many shrimps and you don't catch too many carp on cheese. I'm not around here anyway. And yes, I know you've caught carp on cheese and I know you've caught shrimp and stuff on cheese. But on the whole, cheese mainly catches cod. You don't, it's not the best carp bait. Right, ready to rock and roll. I've already placed my rod holder in the ground just down here. I've got it on a bit of an angle because I'm planning on casting this just over there. That's probably only five or six feet deep. It's not very deep, but it's deep enough. Now I'm putting this rod in the rod holder because this is the one that's furthest from me and Murray Cod have a very hard bite. If that was leaning on a fork shaped stick and I'm sitting right back up there, the rod might get pulled in the river before I have time to come down here and grab it. So they're putting it in a decent fishing rod holder that just prevents it from getting pulled in if a big cod comes along. The less secure rod holder is where I'm going to have my second rod just here. 
right here now here's my second rod as i stated just before this is an old black queen this was my main red fin fishing rod and spinning rod back in the 1980s now it's just a, a dedicated bait rod it's old it's got a 30 dollar reel on it does the job perfect being a longer whippier rod i've got lighter line on it it's got six pound maximum ultra green line that other rod down there's got 12 pound maximum ultra green i think or something similar now with this second rod I'm going to put a bunch of worms on. I'm using the same Pat Noster rig. I'm not going to slide the worm up the hook. I'm just going to get a couple of worms and just thread them through in three or four different places. So that's a nice big chunky bait that can wiggle in the water and attract the fish's attention. If I run out of worms, I'll go to I'll put cheese on both rods. Fish like worms. So I like to put a lot on the hook. Look at that. That should get him excited. The thing with the worms is that they catch everything. Worms catch everything. If there's a yellow belly in here, which is very rare in the Ovens River these days, but if one does swim past, I'm more likely to catch it on the worms than on the cheese. I'm more likely to catch a carp on the che on the worms or a red fin. The, the worms will catch anything that's in this water. Whereas the cheese is more specifically there for the Murray Cod. So I always like to have one rod with worms and one with cheese for two reasons. One so that I've got, it's like a, I call this like the Night Watchman. This is the cheese rod down here is the one that I'm hoping to catch the Murray Cod with. That's what we're targeting tonight. This worm rod here is the Night Watchman that'll just pick up a wicket, if you know what I mean. It'll uh, hopefully just pick up something that just happens to swim past. Now, if I wanted, if I was really serious about targeting a big cod, I would probably be going down there under those logs in the deeper water, and I'd probably use a big barty grub or an enormous great big yabby instead of cheese. As it is, I'm out here in quite open water. There's a few snags on the bottom. A big cod's possible, but not likely. Should be a good bit of fun. Time to sit down and wait for a bite. I'm getting bites on both rods here. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> I've got a problem with my right knee. I'm finding it hard to bend over to where I want to be. I reckon that's either a real little cod, because it's a quite a hard fast bite, or a shrimp. Because it's it's been held into the fishing rod holder right down at the butt. So it's got the whole rod to bounce around, you know what I mean? That's a shrimp. I can tell that's a shrimp by the fact that it's going tap 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 tap. There it goes, three or four real fast little taps. Got him. I was wrong about the shrimp. Look at that, Brady. I said, that's that's a shrimp, I can tell. I said it's either a really small cod or it's a shrimp. And then I said, nah, definitely a shrimp. Uh, nah, definitely a really small cod. <laughs> Get your camera ready, because I'm going down onto this mud in my bare feet. And I'm going to fall ass overhead. Right, I'm going to wet my hand. What I've got here is a little baby trout cod. Trout cod are a protected species everywhere in Australia except for Lake Samble and Lake Kerford up at Beechworth. Trout cod have got this black line through their eye, they've got the overhanging top jaw and they've got spots rather than mottles. I'm going to unhook that as quickly as I can and get him straight back in the drink. He'll be fine. There you go buddy. Not I've got a bite on my other rod, my cheese rod, just to be <laughs> pulled in the river then. <laughs> it's all happening, Pratty, it's all happening. Now, I said 
It's either a small cod or it's a shrimp. I said, nah, it's definitely a shrimp. It looks like I was wrong. I thought I was wrong once, but I wasn't. I was right, so I was really wrong. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's another little trout cod. Great to see these trout cods so small because that means they're spawning. That, that little trout cod took those two big bits of cheese, you know. Oops, the ball's gone in the drink, has it? Is this that dog's ball? Yep. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Three on the board, Paddy. That's another little trout cud. <laughs> I'll do the right thing and I'll go down and whip my hand. Another little trout cod. These things are in plague proportions here in the Ovens River. It's not until you use bait that you realise just how many of these there are actually in the system. Absolutely fantastic. And they haven't been stocked into the Ovens River since 2005, over 10 years ago. So obviously they are recruiting naturally and they're doing it very, very well. Right in the middle of Wang. You know, a lot of people ask me, message me and say, I'm coming to Wangaratta, where's a good spot to go fishing? And I say, anywhere. Anywhere in Wang, anywhere in town, there's cod everywhere. Now we're in a pretty mediocre sort of spot here, aren't we? Like, it's pretty shallow here. I'm only, I don't know about you, but my rod's only in about three foot of water. <laughs> and I've caught three fish and missed a couple of others. Ugh. Every time I go down here, Paddy, you want to put your camera and record. Because you might end up... What's that? I am recording now. <laughs> Famous Mr. Pratty's sort of finished getting organised. You got one rod organised, but the other one was too tangled. <laughs> look at me other rod, would ya? Look, 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 look. I'm just going to leave it. No, no, it's on me. I reckon it's hooked itself. Every time I go down, I miss it. It's got to be on there. Now, look at it dancing around. <laughs> right, hey. You've got to be joking. I reckon it's a, I reckon it twins. Look. That's another tiny little trout cod. They must have had a fantastic breeding season. That's the fourth one we've caught in under an hour. They must have had a great breeding season, either this year or last year. I don't know whether they're big, too big to be classed as this year's. Then again, being that we've had so much rain this summer and high water, they would have grown quick. So they could be, they could have been born back in the spring, you know. For whatever reason, conditions have been perfect for them, and the river is teeming with mud. And now caught four in about 40 minutes. I can't keep two rods in the water. Whoa! Yep. This is this number five trout cod, is it? I'll unhook this before his boat comes around the corner. Another weeny little trout cod. Caught in a bunch of worms. And I'm going to put it back in the water before this boat comes around the corner. Starts asking me a million questions. How's the serenity? <laughs> oh, 
Hey, he's going. Better be careful I don't hook one of them inflatable boats. <laughs> Pop. Actually, I want that out a bit further. I'll cast it out again. I was a bit reluctant to sort of put too much energy into the cast. <laughs> How's the serenity? <laughs> you got one, have you? You still got him? <laughs> Pratty's on the board. Is it another tree cod, is it? Is it another tree cod? These things are in plague proportions. Good examples. One would be that. Um, that lady that videoed the um, the pride of lions or whatever it was, the tigers, remember? <laughs> oh, he's, I've got him, I've got him, and I'm bloody still tangled, I've got him. On the cheese. Is this, the, it's a, it might be a little bit bigger, is this the first muzzer for the night? Or is that another trout cod? It's going into the snags there. That's our first Murray cod. Oh, it's another trout cod. Can you believe it? It's just a bigger one than the rest. <laughs> Look at this. What's this number seven trout cod for the night? Number seven for the evening. I'll get a quick photo with my phone if it doesn't kick. I need to be quick before it has a mental. Seven trout cod for the evening, Mr. Pratt, and that's the biggest one at about 20 centimetres. 25 centimetres, I'd say his last year's. I'm just going to unhook him, throw him straight back in the drink. God, why do they lock their jaws closed? Right, eh? See ya, buddy. Off he goes. Look at that. All these doomsayers that say you shouldn't use cheese and you, know, you shouldn't throw them back in the water like that. These things happen every day. Yeah, exactly right. Where's all the dead cod? We've caught seven in the last hour, just here. How many people caught them on that sandbar last night? Are the next one down or the next one down? It's incredible how there's no carp in here anymore. I mean, they're still here, but just not like they used to be. This is a very carpy spot just here, nice and shallow out in the sun most of the day. A shallow mud flat out in the open, that's what carp love. And we've caught seven trout caught and no carp. You know all those floods we had here back in September? What's that? October, November, December, January, four months. You know where that is now, that water? Got him. That water is now just making its way into the ocean. Down to the Kunong or whatever it's called, Kurong. It's a Murray! It's our first Murray cod! <laughs> That's the first Murray cod of the evening. We've caught seven trout cod. Now we've finally caught a Murray cod and they've all been really, really small. Isn't that amazing? We've caught eight cod. Oh shit, whoops. He landed in the water and he's off. He's off like a bride's naughty. One Murray cod and seven trout cod. So we've got both the species. Now we're just going to go up size a little bit. <laughs> Jesus, my cheese rod nearly got pulled in. I was looking at my phone to see what time it was. And I look at the corner of my eye and I've seen this rod just buckling. <laughs> Here you go, what have we got on here? Another Murray cod! 
So that's, what is it? We've got seven trout cod and two Murray cod, is it? I've got me worm rods bouncing up and down. What a healthy waterway we've got here in Wangaratta. And people say to me, where's the best place in Wangaratta to catch a cod? And I say, anywhere. See you, buddy.